About 10 kilometers north of Kharkiv city center, the Ukrainian army tries to push back Russian forces. The Ukrainians hold their positions for now, but the fighting is intense, according to the commander. Moments Jeez, of respite are short-lived. Gunfire rings out. Okay, go, go, go. And our team leaves the area. Jesus, the press, man. Back in the center of Kharkiv, loud cracks are heard in the streets. And residents Jesus, run man. Earlier on Friday, an unexploded missile hit right in the middle of this pedestrian crossing. This was the scene before bomb disposal experts cleared the projectile. Locals were huh? in disbelief. In this residential neighborhood, another missile struck and this time exploded. No one was killed and some suffered minor injuries. Families were sleeping at the time of impact. The eight-year-old girl shows them, man. photographs of the debris on her father's phone and tells of how they fled underground. Residents have been uh -huh. sheltering in metro stations at night, some sleeping in the parked trains. Smart, themselves. the helmets. Others. Actually, smart dad, though. Five head. I was wearing helmets and shit. Baby, enjoy Elden Ring. Love you and have a great night. month. Some sleeping in the parked trains. Probably get them goggles themselves. also. Others have taken Why? cover in. For debris, man. You never know what's gonna happen. Maybe maybe a missile's gonna hit the top and there's gonna be some, some, some rubble that's gonna fall when they're sleeping and not looking. And you're gonna get rocks on your head. Protect the head. Protect the eyes. Boom. Basement car parks only recently. Especially for babies, because even guys, 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 when you're when you're young, your brain is like four pizzas, right? And the four pizzas are here, right? Like this, and the pizzas are trying to become a pizza, right? Think about it, right? The skull is like a pizza, four pizzas, uh, uh, but they, they want to become a full pizza, and it takes a lot of years for it to fuse into a full pizza. But otherwise, you have a soft spot in the middle. It's direct brain, dude. Surfacing during a lull in fighting. I'm not kidding. I'm not even fucking around, dude. Look at this. Look at that boom. The soft spot. See that? What? I'm, 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 I'm moving just up. On the, uh, north of east edge of Kharkiv, um, there's a lot of artillery coming in, not quite near us. Um, this is a spot where the Russians tried to break through on the ring road yesterday. They were ambushed um, by the Ukrainians. The commanders asked us not to hang out on the crossroads for obvious reasons. Um, Wait, is, is this one to your west? Is it to us in this one? The situation is this. As far as we understand, the Russians have stopped on the northern side of the city. They don't seem to be doing much for now, but they're lobbing shells in um, towards the Ukrainians um, and into the northern suburbs. Our suspicion is they're going to try and decapitate Kiev so they don't have to fight here. What? They don't show anything here, right? Jesus. I was sent to hide in shelter in the basements. 
What a fucking disaster, dude. In modern fucking civilization, dude. On civilians and fucking and 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 and, and like developed places. What if an absolute XQC fucking L. what if tragedy? What the fuck is going on, man? Was this anti air? Holy. The stuff happening in Ukraine is disgusting. Killing innocent kids, Russian soldiers might never even see. No one wins in war. Well, especially in our in our in our current climate of fucking developed human society. You would expect you would expect this like to not happen because of, because uh, you did, because of many factors. What the fuck? It? Yeah, yeah. People said, ah, dude, this is not gonna happen. This is not gonna happen. And then people were clowning on them for saying for for saying that. But really, can you really blame him for saying this? What this one happened? This is like some fucking psycho, like fucking, what the fuck is happening type of shit, man. man holy oh that's a complete disaster okay what is that uh... a russian invasion of ukraine can't tell if this is gonna be bad or good to be honest okay holy shit what the this guy says um you think of modern uh, wars, you think of armies fighting armies, not in fact, yeah, I mean, not, not only armies fighting armies, but you, but you would think like, um, like more like Cold War stuff, you know, like, oh, we're allied with this guy, we have, we have this alliance, we have this, okay, well, if you do this, we'll do that, and you would think that, like, actual wars wouldn't happen, you would think, you know what I mean, you would think, right? Yeah, this shit still happens. You're kind of sheltered? Well, I mean, can you really blame? I mean, can you really, can you really blame me though for being sheltered? Like, dude, it's, it's not it's like what the fuck? Man, I'm I'm trying to learn and understand what the fuck it, and I'm, it, other dude, I don't understand why you're like um, you're like downplaying like how bad this is. This is like civilians and cities like develop where people people live and go to work and like people, they're like. You, you hear bombs like fucking McDonald's. Well, that's like uh, that's like end game disastrous. XQCL. Uh oh. Is there any of those toes at all? It's news. Yeah, but news is you know. In southern Ukraine, airstrikes hitting large cities, and thousands of people attempting to flee the Ukrainian capital Kiev. Footage from Ukraine shows scenes of war after President Putin announced a military operation in the country. Everyone here is shocked. Uh, everyone here knew that this might be coming for months. It was predicted and discussed. And now that it's here, it's very hard to fathom. And people here, uh, a lot of them have fled, but a lot remain. Poland, like to Ukrainian officials said strikes targeted war. military installations, there are airfields, and, jets from and different countries flying all day. Kiev is under heavy bombing right now. What a disaster! I feel terrible and can't sleep because of that. government <laughs> facilities across the country. Air raid sirens blared in Kiev after President Putin's statement was broadcast. Link, this is a very good and informative video made by Real Life Law. It explains everything very well. After President Putin's statement Wait, so was broadcast. A statement? A special operation. operation. 
защита людей, которые на протяжении 8 лет подвергаются издевательствам, геноциду со стороны киевского режима. In the early hours of February 24th, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky declared martial law and called for global assistance. Wait, how does this protect anybody by... You guys, I don't know anything about the climate, okay, or, or the, the intricacies of, of the politics behind it, okay? But the protection by, 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 by sending bombs on civilians? I don't know about this, man. It seems like some... Does anybody even buy this? In the early hours of February 24th... Does anybody even, does anybody even buy this? Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky declared martial law and called for global assistance. Вже закликав світових лідерів задіяти всі можливі санкції проти Путіна, розпочати масштабну оборонну підтримку, закрити для агресора повітряний простір над Україною. Спільно ми маємо врятувати Україну, врятувати демократичний світ. President Biden called the move unjustified, pledging new actions against Russia. The EU said it would hit Moscow's financial sector, freezing assets and banning the export of technology to the country. We will weaken Russia's economic base and its capacity to modernize. The United Nations condemned Russia's moves during a meeting of the Security Council late... Is that enough, Wednesday. though? This is the saddest moment. Zelensky and the Ukrainians have bought yes, steel yes, and yes. Yes. gadgets. I know nothing about this chat, but... Technically, aren't like um like diplomatic sanctions or whatever the fuck like they they or alliance that you break XQC are easy to like LTE rebuild Ukraine. or something? Like, aren't these things like easy kind of reversible? It's kind of like oh dude oh we're not gonna do that anymore dude. And it's like okay later on it's like okay well you know you don't think so because I feel like I don't know. Channer, a secretary general of the United Nations, President Putin, in the name of humanity, bring your troops back. To Russia. President uh, Vladimir Putin of Russia said uh, his goal is to hold uh, Ukraine's leaders to account and, and put them on trial for uh, the last eight years uh, of events in, in Donbass. We don't know the, the end US game as yet, uh, but as troops uh, enter from various directions and as uh, airstrikes uh, continue in all over the country, it does uh, seem possible that... Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, I've, I've already acknowledged that, like, sort of things happen in, in other countries and whatnot, but... Um... This is a little bit different, though. I think you can. That in Russia's nature, goal is, is to like. make its way to Vladimir Kiev, the capital, Putin in order to Nazi take over Ukraine. Disaster. Okay. The Russian ruble is now a weaker currency than Robux law. Um. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, look up the 13 men of Snake Island. Rest in peace. What is Crux? What the fuck is that? Get the best explanation why Russia invaded watch news videos <laughs> this and real life dude, dude, this chat, dude. <laughs> dude, yes, yes, look at <laughs> XQC, please be careful. There are more than a few believers videos out there with content. Chat. Most notably, at least one which shows people literally carbonized by airstrikes. Be careful, and if you need to, have someone pre-watch your skin. Can you guys believe that the heroic MIG-29 pilot took down serious military planes in air combat? Watch this in this video, there is a lot of information about everything that is happening in Ukraine, Link. Can't for Elden Ring RP server, that's the only way I can fix my erectile. Need a chill? I mean, yeah, yeah, we can chill while we're watching this one, man. Dude, I'm exploring and I'm, I'm trying to get in touch with a fucking modern media as I'm waking up and trying to get the stream started. Am I not allowed? I'm drinking coffee and watching fucking world news. Can I not do that?
Chat, chat, couldn't other countries technically help and put like fucking like anti-air fucking like blasters on the ground or whatnot? So whenever there's airplanes coming through, they go and it vaporizes everything, dude. Oh, cause, oh man, yeah, because it's, it's over-civilized bullshit. Oh, yeah, it's a fucking disaster, man. That was Star War 3. Well, guys, 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 guys. If you, if you send planes to fucking land the shells on fucking civilized territory, Why how how is that not World War 3? But if you put a fucking machine that stops it from happening, now it's World War 3. How, how, that's, 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 that's so hypocritical. Happy 29 months, my doggy. Here's to many more. It's a part of NATO. Both governments are corrupt. It's unfortunate innocent lives are spared, but this Jesus. conflict has been growing for years. Strange people only care till it's too late. Love you, man. XQCL. When NATO come to help, Putin will nuke. Jesus. Okay. Okay, boys. Ghost believers. <laughs> Russian aggression against Ukraine moving into. What do you guys? What do you guys? Is this is this a good source of news chat? This the I. I seven. Russian advancement into Holy fuck, dude! The country and major cities. <sighs> Countries are also responding have tonight. Been Germany stuff. sending a Poland thousand anti-tank weapons Germany and surface-to-air missiles are into Ukraine. Equipment and the U.S. Secretary of State says an additional three hundred fifty million dollars in military assistance has been authorized for the country. Okay, yeah, this, this is this is this is a little bit more hardcore than people are videos. saying. Help Ukraine, but they are forgetting about China. They are allies of BBC Russia and News. North Korea the are allies of China. Here. If Russia attack a NATO coast. country, it really will be World War Three. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting that you have to be you have to be part of some sort of fucking alliance that to to. Uh, okay, makes sense. All again. Cool. Modern world, the by the way. Rush to Kiev, ah. a capital under attack. As we headed for the city this morning, there was little moving. Apart from Ukrainian, I'm not R word. I just think like, it's stupid. Like, oh, like, yes, I just, I just, I just think like it's dumb. Like, uh, fuck. Bonjour, Felix. Like, oh, New oh, Ukraine oh, you, 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 you can, you can do crazy shit against fucking, against fucking civilians. Link. Oh, I, I, as long as they're not part of some sort of alliance or like, what the fuck is that, man? In troops, but the Russians are watching from the skies. Ready I don't know to how it is. I just think I don't know. It's, it's, here, just an it's politics, but it's fucking nonsense. Capital. Well, this is what we've come across on the road to Kiev. This convoy was obviously traveling to the city to be part of the defense of Kiev. This is an air Not defense missile works. system. It was hit yesterday. The smoke is still rising here. Guys, I... S Whoa! What the fuck? Flats near Kiev's what the Giuliani fuck? Airport. The authorities here say it was a Russian missile strike that killed two people. It could have been many more, but plenty of locals had fled or taken cover in shelters. Yuri Shevchuk, who lives nearby, says the West must help Ukraine. This has got deleted? I, well, I mean, I skipped it. Uh, for you, for your governments, Call Destiny. Uh, that we are in need, urgently well, well, well. in need, as if soon World as War possible, three as much as happen, possible. We are at in least need we will get a new uh, anti-aircraft missiles. We are in need anti-tank missiles. We need 
ammunition. Is there any message that you would wish to send to President Putin? I wanted to say to President Putin that uh, only one way for him is a way to hell. Well, this is what Kiev woke up to this morning. All of this destruction is in a residential area in a European city. And there is a real sense here now that nowhere in the capital is safe. And so much of Kiev now looks like this. I feel like I got Azan is not, not going to pick up the phone. Updates. Watch this video link. It's very good and explains NATO, etc. 50,000 viewers. $150 per use 22 rifle. He's playing Still, right? yeah. Still standing, but bracing Roughly for impact. Million when it's all said and done done to your army. Ukraine's, Ukraine's embattled president, Volodymyr Zelensky, took to, to the deserted streets, to shooting a Let's selfie video to reassure his people. I am here, he said, and we will not lay down our arms. Far from it, we found Ukrainians taking up arms, forming volunteer brigades to defend the city alongside the local police. This volunteer, who goes by the nickname Moloy, said, I don't want to live in Russia, and my brothers in arms don't want that either. We will defend this city, or I will die. The volunteers are looking for Russian saboteurs, said to be already in the city. Nearby, we met Nino, out walking her dog, oh, the and venting her fury. Oh. We demand an end to the war, she says. We can do it with sanctions. We must isolate the aggressor country. It terrorizes the whole world. With Russian forces at the gates, some are still fleeing the capital. For now, the city remains no in Ukrainian hands, but the battle may be weapons. just beginning. Ronald Geeran, BBC so. News, Kyiv. Well, this Russians evening, in a major shift in Poland. Yeah, yeah, but doesn't that increase tension, though? Doesn't that increase tension fight. whenever when, uh, when there's, like, s uh, it, it does, though. Olaf Scholz no? says Germany so will careful. deliver weapons to Ukraine. These are set to include a thousand anti-tank weapons and 500 Stinger surface-to-air missiles. You should watch the government the in Berlin has also indicated it could now back XQCL. plans to cut Russia off from the swift international payment what? system. Our Europe editor, Katia Adler, joins us from Brussels. Katia, how significant are these announcements? Oh, it is really. Look, guys, guys, I understand, guys. guys. From what I was told, can I get wrong by Destiny? Is, is that is that, is that what are you saying? I'm trying to learn here. Okay, I'm trying to learn. Okay. Is that is that? Some are NATO, right? In the like alliance, whatever. And the Ukraine is not. Ukraine, Ukraine is not. Right? So other countries, they try to help by like providing some stuff, by like investing a little bit, right? But not too much. Otherwise, they're like they're like actively helping, right? As a, a NATO ally or whatever. So they're like they're like putting putting chips in, but they can't they, they can't go too hard or whatever. Otherwise, otherwise. Russia is gonna get is gonna get ultra mauled, and that, now with now we have a, a fucking boom. Really significant. I mean, we heard, we heard from the German Chancellor himself. He called this a watershed moment. You know, Germany traditionally, because of its role in the Second World War, has been very wary about getting involved in military conflict. And um, but this aggression by Russia on Ukraine has put the German government under real pressure at home um, and also abroad from other Western allies. So Germany will not only be sending weapons directly uh, to Ukraine itself, but it's also lifted some restrictions on German-made weapons owned by other countries. And so they can help Ukraine as well, like, for example, the Netherlands uh, or the Baltic states who have been waiting as well. And as you mentioned, I mean, Germany had been very opposed to rejecting uh, Russia from SWIFT. That's that global financial transaction network. But Swift. today, I the use that. said they were working on a way of how they could remove uh, Russia in a targeted way. And um, that, of course, is a move that is supported by the UK, the US and other member states as well. I think what we're seeing here is, you know, Germany, the EU as a whole, I is not I exactly do, famed for very... What? Yeah, whenever I do transactions, I have a SWIFT code. I have to give them, I have to give them my SWIFT, man. 
quick decision making. But what we're seeing right now in Ukraine is changing all of that. The EU right now uh, is working on its third sanction package in a week. Whichever country I call uh, prime ministers or the president in the case of France are talking all the time to other leaders in the EU, to the UK, to Joe Biden in the US as well. Tomorrow, EU foreign ministers Jesus. meet and they'll talk about coordinating military action. And we're about to hear uh, from the EU Commission Chief Ursula von der Leyen. Interesting. She is. OK. Me and my family are As in the shelter now. Don't show we it. moved in yesterday. No, it's fine. Don't support Whoa. our president. He was a fucking comedian. He is the cause of this mess. Guys, guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then... already, lol. It's fine. Look at that. You see that? That's the kind of shit that's happening to them. It's not TOS? Yeah, I know. That's terrifying, isn't it? Look at that. What the fuck? Wait, wait, if he was just doing the exact same thing, but like 20 meters to the right, right? They would have been boom. Because I literally, I, I literally thought the exact same thing that a lot of you guys did. I, I thought to myself, uh, I don't want to listen to the screams of like a little kid, right? Snake it's, it's Island, like, Ukraine I don't, don't want to listen to that. Yeah, that's fucking and, cooked. Um, that is actually fucking know, cooked. No reason to do that. This is not a joke. Well, fake this from years like, ago. Again, this isn't uh, CNN. This is what always happens, though, dude. This is what Disney was saying. Guys, guys, guys I had to, I had to be, I had to back up Destiny. But guys, this is not what Disney was saying exactly. Oh, well, it's why you don't watch breaking news and new videos or whatever, and you wait till shit, shit settles down because uh, sometimes there can be some like old thing or like fake thing. It's all getting mixed up in there, dude. And it's like and, nobody knows anymore. Uh, you know, misrepresenting the ethnicity of a certain person in some police Link conflict. you must watch as it shows the kind of this military is not one of the... that Russia has in its locker. Link. What is that? Okay, watch one more, Link. What is that? Дорогие друзья. My God, this is fucking loud. This is the original video of Putin talking about why he invaded Ukraine. Westernized media will guys, not show this guys, full video. Guys, would this be informative, chat? You know this is old. Is this, is this still relevant or not? I'm gonna see him explain it with such caution. Oh no, look at that. Why they won't invade the Jesus, man. Yeah, that's, that, that's definitely outdated for sure, for sure. Okay. God save us. Real life lore is a good one. Is it good though? Because I want to I want to kind of like uh, Russians get informed don't in a less there like uh, oh, uh, boom equals entertainment type Russians of thing, you know? Saying they didn't even know they were there to kill Ukrainians. You have to remember most Russians oh, probably this. have this family in Ukraine. Okay. Vice. <laughs> As I say, no. was good. Um, the real life war is good. It's a long video. This is an it? original video of Putin talking about why he invaded Ukraine and is Western Is this good? This vice, this vice is vice it, it hit or miss. Vice is is very good. Vice is very bad. Guys. He, People like this great advice. I think advice is dog shit at, at times, but sometimes pretty good. It depends. It, it, it's very hit or miss. But if just as it's good, maybe it could be good. Yo, Felix, watch this new relevant video. New Ukraine military tactics and frontline updates. This one is bad. Video from a knowledgeable Vice dog channel. shit. Dropped 20 minutes ago. Watch this okay. video link. Okay. Um, this video is made possible by Curiosity Stream and Nebula. I'll Watch give, another I'll give, I'll give brand try, new full-length companion video to this one in my yes, ongoing modern bit, guys, conflict series that explains it's game time. the entire so course of the 2008 Russian invasion of Georgia, so as well as the entire the war so far between Russia, Russia and Ukraine video. since 2014 in the Donbass, all of which you can access. Posting the link in chat. Also, last person to type Giga Chat gets a free sub. Okay. Giga Chad, so by it. signing up for the Curiosity get, Stream Nebula get, Bundle get, deal for less than fifteen dollars a year at curiositystream.com slash real life lore. Throughout the past few months, there has been almost constant news and coverage in the West about Russia's imminent plans to invade Ukraine. Started large scale military drills this morning. And this is a very dangerous moments. Stoking fears of an invasion. More than 2,000 uh, troops, according to American intelligence, sent within the 24 hours. American citizens should leave, should leave now. 
On the morning of February the 24th, these fears proved to be well-founded. Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, effectively declared yeah, war on yeah, you. Yeah, the only problem with, the, with Biden's speech pattern sometimes that I feel like it is that sometimes I feel like he doesn't believe in what he's saying, which I think is, is kind of bad uh, uh, overall in terms of... Uh, and authorized the Russian military to like invade a the country. Explosions were quickly reported afterwards across the country. And immediately prior to this declaration, the Russian army had amassed around 200,000 soldiers, along with their tanks, artillery, equipment, and field hospitals across their border, and many others inside of Belarus along their border with Ukraine. For comparison, this is nearly the same size as the entire Ukrainian military, and about the same number of troops sent by the United States when invading Iraq in 2003. This is certainly large enough to be an effective invasion force. Jesus. Even further, the Russian government has recognized the independence of the two breakaway states inside of Ukraine, Donetsk and Luhansk, and ordered Russian troops inside of both. When factoring in the Russian military presence already stationed in Crimea, you can quickly begin seeing that the Russians have Ukraine almost entirely surrounded. And now that war has broken out, it has the potential to unleash the most serious conflict seen in Europe since the Second World War. And the biggest question on everybody's mind this entire time has been this. What exactly does Vladimir Putin and Russia want with Ukraine? And the uh -huh. answer is, of course, it's complicated. The origins of what Putin wants today are rooted in what happened more than three decades ago back in the early 1990s when the Soviet Union first collapsed. For centuries before this event, whether as part of the Soviet Union or the Russian Empire, the modern countries we know of today as Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, and others had all been a part of the same country, and their people had largely moved between all of them across generations. These places are all deeply and intimately connected by their shared history, and for decades, that history involved Question, being Jack, widely- Guys, in our more modern world, is this something that is that is even fa uh, uh, even a possibility to like get land and now it's yours and boom, now you're building there, dude, and that dude now our our, our fucking territory is expanded, boom, that's ours now, and uh, and the whole world agrees and moving on. It's a thing you think. He recognized as one of the world's most dominant and formidable global superpowers. But all of that changed in late 1991, when suddenly the sweeping United Empire that had existed in some form or it's another real. for centuries. Okay, so yeah, last time, last time, last time I pause. Sorry, chat. Is I don't know. Okay, I'm not trying to. Ask, I guess I'm I'm asking questions. I'm not making statements. Okay? So don't get mad at me for not knowing something. Dude, but my country, but but as I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know. I'm asking because if it happened, I didn't know about it, then so I didn't know. Collapsed and left in its place 15 newly independent republics. Today, the largest of them, Russia, has only half of the population that the former United Soviet Union had, and she possesses an economy that's only moderately larger than Spain's, a country with only a third of the population that ceased being a great power back in the 18th century. At the same time, the massive amounts of territories that were once dominated from the central government in Moscow have been shrinking almost continuously ever since. During the Cold War, there were two rival competing military alliances on the European continent. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, in the West, and the Warsaw Pact in the East. Moscow didn't outright... That's the buffer zone he was talking about, right? That's the, the, rule the countries of the, the Warsaw Russian. Pact, but they were effectively locked into Moscow's orbit as thralls or puppet states. From Moscow's perspective, these states provided a massive buffer against any potential military oh. incursion from their primary Cold War rivals to the West in NATO. You see, from the Netherlands in the West to the Ural Mountains in the East, this whole part of Europe is dominated by a geographic feature called the North European Plain. Almost entirely flat, the plain is shaped like a funnel with a very narrow width in northern Germany, but with a mouth that opens up increasingly wider as it approaches the Ural Mountains. As the open plain gets wider across the east, it becomes increasingly difficult to defend across its entire length. And as a result, from the perspective of any regime based in Moscow, regardless of the time period and regardless of the ideology, it is imperative to expand control westwards across as much of this open plain as possible in order to narrow the gap that they need to defend in the event of a conflict with the west. 
during yeah, the Cold War. I, just, I hate to share shit like this. But it makes me think a bit of, uh, of uh, like risk or whatever, right? You're trying to push like multiple territories that have like uh, three, then two, then the one or whatever, and then you have only the one. And you only have to design the one of them. The control this plane by a regime in Moscow was at its greatest historical extent, and was exerted either outright or by proxy from the Urals all the way through East Germany. And the entire wider section of the funnel was firmly controlled by Moscow, with Austria and Finland remaining neutral and Yugoslavia a non-aligned communist state. The only fronts that Moscow at the time had to truly worry about against NATO were across the Sudeten Mountains the Black Sea, and a narrow line across the North European plain in central Germany. All easily defensible positions. Any invasion of the Soviet world from the west across these geographic frontiers would have been incredibly difficult. But in the 30 years since 1991, uh -oh. the situation has changed dramatically against Moscow's favor. Today, the former Warsaw Pact territories of East Germany, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria are all a part of NATO, while the former Soviet republics themselves of Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia all are as well. This reality has pushed the NATO front lines significantly further to the east, across the wider section of the North European plain, and a separated Russian territory between the mainland and the Kaliningrad exclave here, across what's known as the Suvalki Gap. If you're sitting in the Kremlin in Moscow and you still believe that NATO is a hostile military alliance, or could become one in the future, then this situation understandably looks pretty grim. But it's not totally lost yet. In the years following the breakup of the Soviet Union, many of the newly independent republics established and joined their own military alliance called the Collective Security Treaty Organization, or CSTO, which in Europe consists of Russia, Belarus, and Armenia, but not Ukraine, which has remained a sort of neutral mm. zone between NATO in the west and the CSTO in the east. And now, within this lens, you can easily see why Ukraine is currently and always will be a geographic core interest to Moscow. If Ukraine is within Moscow's orbit, then it pushes the CSTO's and Moscow's defensive lines to the Carpathian Mountains in the southwest, and it narrows their exposure across the North European plain to only the eastern border of Poland. And while the Baltic states do lie across the plain as well, CSTO forces could easily encircle them by rapidly advancing across the narrow- Chat, so ge geographically, guys- they trying to narrow the gap so like they they own more of this and it's like less to defend because this is kind of like a wide wide like a concave here right they're trying to push it like that well csto forces could easily encircle them by rapidly advancing across the narrow suvalki gap between kaliningrad and belarus and cut them off from the rest of nato meaning that they aren't as grave of a geographical threat Conversely, however, if Ukraine became a NATO member state, it would surge the NATO front lines far beyond the Carpathian Mountains and far across the wider section of the North European plain and place the new defensible front line across nearly 2,300 kilometers of open, hard to defend flat land, the easternmost section of which would only be a little more than 300 kilometers away from Volgograd, which, if taken, would shut down the entire Volga River and cut off Russia's valuable oil and gas resources coming up from around the Caspian Sea from the rest of the country, as nearly happened during the Second World War, back when the city was better known as Stalingrad. Oh, Even no. further, Belarus, a friendly and loyal CSTO state that is often considered a mere extension of Moscow itself, would suddenly become an indefensible salient protruding deep into the NATO front lines, surrounded entirely by NATO territory Chat. on three that flanks. Thus, Ukraine's no, 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 no. outright control by Moscow, or at least neutrality, is essential to the defense of the CSTO and Russia. If you believe that NATO is a hostile aggressor, Jesus. or could become one in the future. But all of this is really only the beginning of what Oil Russia and Putin want from started, Ukraine. The biggest thing they it. want of all is energy. While their overall economy is little larger than Spain's, Russia remains a global superpower through the lens of energy resources. And it's specifically oil and gas that is the most critical component oh, wait, to wait, understand. Wait, wait. This is actually an important part. Sorry, I missed it. 
Spain's Russia remains a global superpower through the lens of energy resources, and it's specifically oil and gas that is the most critical component to understand about Russia's worldwide ambitions. Across multiple vast oil fields, Russia is the world's second largest producer of oil ahead of even Saudi Arabia, while at the same time, Russia also possesses the world's largest proven reserves Wait. of natural gas. Well, I don't get it. I mean, how are they so broke then? largely across Siberia, which has enabled Russia to become the world's leading exporter of natural gas. The revenues gained from the sale of all these oil and gas exports are the literal foundation for the modern Russian Not, state they, they and Russian as... power, because they provide as much as 50% of the entire Russian government's budget and as represent about 30% of Russia's entire GDP. Russia has used the vast money earned from selling oil and gas okay. abroad that's to fine. fund their military, pay off debts, save cash, and finance its own restoration as a global great power. Russia oh. is therefore effectively a petrostate, just like Saudi Arabia or Iran, and is the only petrostate located in Europe, at least for now. So not, for you see, despite these massive geological blessings, they also come with a number of geographical catches from Moscow's perspective. Most of their gas is sold off to the hungry customers in the European Union, so much so that 35% of the EU's entire gas supply comes from Russia alone, including Germany, the world's fourth largest economy who imports nearly half of their natural gas from Russia. This flow of gas towards Germany mm -hmm. and Europe across this complex system of pipelines provides critical revenues for the Russian government to function and provides critical heat wait, for wait, European... Wait, but if, if, if Germany has been, has been giving, giving guns and giving permission to other countries to give them guns and use the guns or whatever, couldn't, couldn't Russia get mad and then the gas prices are going to go way up? ...in cities during the winter, and so both sides heavily rely upon the other here. Any disruption in this trade relationship would be disastrous from Moscow's perspective, oh, and Ukraine is the most likely place for such a disruption to happen in the future. Back during the Soviet times when Russia and Ukraine were both one country, pipelines were built across Ukraine almost like a bridge that transported gas directly from the Siberian sources to the customers in Europe. But then, all of a sudden, after the USSR's collapse, Ukraine was an independent country who was demanding tariffs to the tune of billions of dollars a year from Russia in order to continue using their country as a gas bridge to Europe. I and mean, Russia had no other choice but to agree, because the pipeline infrastructure anywhere else didn't yet exist. As late as 2005, 80% I mean, of Russia's gas exports heading to Europe were still flowing across pipelines through Ukraine. But in the decades since, Russia has sought to solve this over-reliance on Ukraine by building multiple new pipelines that avoid Ukraine entirely, like Yamal Europe across loyal Belarus, Nord Stream 1 and 2 beneath the Baltic that go directly from Russia to Germany, Moscow's largest single customer, along with South Stream, Blue Stream, and Turk Stream beneath the Black Sea. Jesus. By 2024, Russia has plans to completely cease all of their gas exports through Ukraine entirely, and the government will save billions of dollars in tariffs as a result. But that yeah, is but hardly what has been so threatening about Ukraine recently. Significantly why, more... Why, isn't the income of the oil itself or are worth tariffs themselves? Menacing though? to the perspective of Moscow was the discovery for the first time in early 2012 that Ukraine's exclusive economic zone within the Black Sea the point, may okay. contain more than 2 trillion cubic meters worth of natural gas, largely concentrated around the Crimean Peninsula. To make matters even more interesting, further technological advancements in the early 2010s that enabled the successful drilling of natural gas and oil from shale rock unlocked the potential shale gas hotspots for Ukraine around Donetsk and Kharkiv in the east and around the Carpathians in the west. Beginning in 2012, there was suddenly a very real Chills. possibility that almost out of nowhere, Ukraine had the world's 14th largest reserves of natural gas just behind Australia and Iraq. 
But as a relatively poor country, Ukraine lacked the finances, the technology, or the equipment to successfully harvest any of these resources in any large quantities. But that all changed when, shortly afterwards, the Ukrainian government began granting Shell. exploration and drilling rights to the likes of Shell and Exxon. It was suddenly possible that within a few years, these Western companies would enable Ukraine to transform into Europe's second petrostate, which would have not only been a direct and serious competitor to Russia's own gas supply okay, to the yeah. European. So the rich Westerners are like, we have the money to build the infrastructure, right? And we're gonna we're gonna milk your shit. And, and and give you money for it and we're gonna make an, a, a trade union and thus at the same time a major threat to the russian government's budget and gdp but would have also provided the easy path of eventual ukrainian admission into the european union and nato as well and this is what's really in my opinion what this whole situation is truly about in 2012, at the time when these discoveries were initially made, the man in charge of Ukraine was Viktor Yanukovych, a pro-Russian politician who was keeping Ukraine more politically aligned with the interests of Moscow. So long as he was president, these discoveries were not directly threatening to Russia. But when suddenly in February 2014, his government was toppled in a pro-EU and pro-Western revolution in Kiev, Moscow was very quick to take the opportunity to invade some of Ukraine, seize the Crimean Peninsula, and annex it in the name of historical claims and protecting ethnic Russians. But by seizing- Gu Guys, I hate- because my brain is corrupted, guys. I've played too many fucking video games. All I can think about is att attachments. The opportunity to invade some of Ukraine. Look, he has the scope uh, in, in Tarkov, the one that's kind of scuffed, right? Right? Look, you see it? You see it? Boom right there. Brain. And see? Compensator? Come at the front. Seize the look, Crimean look, Peninsula look, look. and annex Next it scene? in the name of his. Look, this guy has the holographic with the top, with the, the crosshair with, with the lens on it. Look, fucking cubic motherfucking silencer. Historical claims and protecting ethnic. Foregrip fucking stand Russians but by seizing Crimea the Russians what, also took direct what? control of two-thirds of Ukraine's coastline and by extension the vast majority of Ukraine's maritime exclusive Come economic zone that. and most critically an estimated 80 percent of Ukraine's potential offshore oil and gas reserves in addition, billions of dollars worth of drilling equipment and other assets in the peninsula were seized by the Russians, <gasps> all of which completely crippled the Ukrainian government's future potential to challenge Russia's gas supremacy in Europe. To make matters even worse from Ukraine's perspective, the areas of Ukraine that are the most rich in shale gas are located very near to the most major the conflict zones encouraged and funded from Moscow, yeah. with the Donetsk and Luhansk rebellions here and the Transnistria breakaway republic in Moldova over Yeah, so if they, get, if they get this, not only is it narrower for them and easier to defend whatever, right but they also get the oil here which in my view is not a coincidence as a result shell and exxon both backed out from all of their contracts with the ukrainian government shortly afterwards leaving ukraine with no capability to extract the remaining resources themselves and no capability to challenge russia's occupation of crimea from the perspective of putin and his regime these were all mandatory actions to take in order to curb a western oriented ukraine from ever selling major supplies of gas to Europe that would threaten his own regime's primary source of wealth and power. Ukraine had to be dismembered Jesus. to protect himself and the other oligarchs who are in power. But there's more. Under Holy fuck these infrastructures. Uh, that's insane, dude. Who are in power. But there's more. Under Putin, Russia can't ever give Crimea back to Ukraine because it would surrender the entire exclusive economic zone and all of the Imagine gas the resources windows, within um, it back, along with the strategic port city of Sevastopol, one of the very few year-round ice-free ports that the Russian Navy can use and needs to operate throughout the Black Sea and the Mediterranean. If Crimea was ever returned to Ukraine and Ukraine joined NATO, they would regain their ability to threaten the Russian government's primary source of revenue, and the Russian Navy's most geostrategically valuable port would be lost forever. But Ukraine has some pressure that it can and has been applying itself. 
Naturally speaking, the geography of Crimea is that it's almost an island, only loosely connected to the rest of Europe and covered by dry and arid steppes and some salty marshes with very little fresh water for people or agriculture. Prior to the Russian invasion and annexation, the vast majority of Crimea's freshwater supply, like 85% of it, came down into the peninsula from a canal built during the Soviet era that diverted water from the Dnieper River. Uh -oh. But after the Russians took it over in 2014, the Ukrainians weren't exactly in the mood to continue sending down the water, and they filled up the canal within their remaining borders to the north with cement and blocked the flow of all this water down into the now Russian-occupied Crimea. As a result, Crimea has ever since been essentially dying a death from a thousand cuts, as it steadily recedes back into the dry and arid steppe of history, while modern climate change is only making everything even worse. As 2020 Jesus. was the driest year ever on record in Crimea since record keeping began 150 years ago. As a result, the Russian government is struggling to maintain its hold. The capital city Simferopol's reservoir is, today, less than 7% full, and the city has been having to ration water supplies. Even after the Russians built a nearly $4 billion bridge across the Kerch Strait here to connect the peninsula over to the Russian mainland, shipping in water is difficult, and life for the more than 2 million people on the peninsula is getting harder after the annexation, not better. The Russian government is having to spend billions of dollars a year to financially prop up Crimea, and it's largely all because of this canal being shut down by the Ukrainians over on the other side. And Ukraine is obviously not in any kind of mood to open it back up again. As a result, the current crisis in Ukraine can also be seen through the lens of climate and water conflict. And it's one of the biggest reasons why Russia is doing what it's doing now. The current Prime Minister of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, has stated on multiple occasions that the primary goal going forward for the Ukrainian nation is the reclamation of the Crimean Peninsula from Russia. Currently, Ukraine has no realistic capability to challenge the overwhelmingly more powerful and capable Russian military. But in the future, were Ukraine to join NATO and a murky conflict breaks out between themselves and Russia over Crimea, or in the eastern rebel-occupied Donbass where it may be unclear who started it, it's hypothetical that Ukraine could trigger Article 5 of the NATO Treaty, uh -oh. which states that, quote, if a NATO ally is the victim of an armed attack, each and every other member of the alliance will consider this act of violence as an armed attack against all members and will take the actions it deems necessary to assist the ally attacked. Therefore, in the future, the fear of those in power in the Kremlin is that Ukraine will bring in the rest of NATO to fight Russia in taking back Crimea. And that is a war that Moscow knows it will lose. Not only because of NATO's much more advanced military capabilities, but because of Russia's own internal demographic problem. But don't understand why, why does Ukraine not want to go to NATO? Why, Ever why since the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia's deaths have exceeded her births. While the nation's fertility rate has been among the lowest well, in do, the world, can't. and why so not, the country's they? population has been shrinking almost continuously ever since. But since the COVID-19 pandemic began in 2020, this shrinking population problem has only gotten even worse. And Russia is currently undergoing its largest peacetime decline in people ever. In all of recorded history. Is it possible because, because NATO think it's too, it's too high risk that, oh, oh if, if we put them in and they get attacked, we're, we're definitely going to have to attack. And then they, they know for a fact it'd be World War II, World War III, Even worse than during the 1990s, right after sense. the Soviet collapse. Right now, Russia has around 25 million men within the country who are of military service age. But the government knows that Sorry, as time I, I, continues I on, that potential pool of manpower is only going to get smaller and smaller. Therefore, it could be reasoned behind the inner walls of the Kremlin that the longer Russia waits to act upon Ukraine, the Russia. more difficult it is going to become in the future. And so the earlier, the better. Now, by occupying Crimea and by maintaining conflicts in the Donbass region of eastern Ukraine, Russia has so far succeeded in keeping Ukraine out of NATO. And by building up troops along the border and hosting joint military exercises in Belarus, Moscow is further able to signal to Ukraine that they well, are in danger. So by sustaining border pressure, there, it, it makes like Ukraine not likely to be in the NATO or whatever? Which can panic it. investors in the Ukrainian government and damage the economy even further. 
and which forces Ukraine to spend even more money on their own military and defense, taking away vital cash that they could be using to further develop their own natural gas infrastructure. And of course, Russia has been fueling a war inside of Ukraine in the East now for years, ever since 2014 that has greatly depleted the Ukrainian government's time, manpower, and resources. After being taken over by pro-Russian separatists following Russia's invasion and annexation of Crimea, both Donetsk and Luhansk declared their independence from Ukraine eight years ago, and after being supported financially and militarily from Russia, have continuously been fighting a war against the Ukrainian government ever since that has already claimed the lives of more than 14,000 people. For years, most of the- Oh, is that what they were saying it? And, 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 that, and that Russia says that this is us, we, we, gotta, we gotta get it back, because it is our people, our city, whatever, is our shit, and they say, we're just getting what's ours, whatever. He claimed the lives of more than 14,000 people. For years, most of the territory of each has been controlled by the Ukrainian government. But just a few days ago, Russia, for the first time, officially recognized both as fully independent countries separate from Ukraine and deployed their troops into each. Each. Right now, as I made this video, it's still unclear Wait, what exactly Putin is ultimately planning for Ukraine. He may only be plotting a limited strike into the country in order to permanently sever both Donetsk and Luhansk from the country, as he did with Crimea eight years previously, and effectively occupy each. He may also be plotting a further limited strike from Crimea in order to neutralize the block in the canal in order to free up Crimea's struggling water supply. He may be planning to go further, though, to ensure that this situation never happens again and push Russian territory all the way to at least some of the Dnieper River to simultaneously stabilize Crimea's geographic technically guys I'm not asking if they just keep pushing it's like oh dude they won't keep pushing they keep pushing people say ah they won't keep pushing and they keep pushing what happens then is that is that is that is the rest of the world gonna like say oh this is fine or they're gonna go position by freeing up the water supply, deny even more of Ukraine's coastline and access to natural gas reserves, and set up a stronger potential defensive line against any attack from the west along the Dnieper River's banks. Alternatively, he may also be planning a southern takeover of Ukraine, which would simultaneously bring Donetsk and Luhansk into Russia, link up Crimea with the Dnieper River and the canal, block off Ukraine from the rest of the Black Sea, and transform the country into a landlocked state, permanently removed from any remaining offshore shore gas deposits and link up mainland Russian territory with both Crimea and loyal Transnistria in the west. Or he may really be planning an all-out assault to take over the entire country so as to guarantee that Russia and the CSTO's defensive lines against NATO are pushed further back towards the more narrow opening of the North European plain between the Carpathian Mountains and the Baltic Sea across the border of Poland and in so doing, guaranteeing that Ukraine will never be used against them and that Belarus will never become an indefensible salient. From there, Russian provocations into Moldova are almost a certainty next. Another former Soviet state who isn't a member of NATO and conveniently already has a pro-Russian breakaway state that Russia will eventually get around to recognize. Yeah, this is scary because earlier in the video he said that um that they have a lot of gas, almost as much as as uh, as all, all the the other uh, Middle Eastern countries or whatever, right? And they've been all putting in it, or most of it, into military and whatnot. So they have a lot, though. Thing as well. The, Transnistria. Of, uh, it's guns, all part of ammo, Putin's repeatedly stated goal of shit. bringing back the old Soviet and Russian empire for the 21st century. Now that Putin has chosen to invade, it's not entirely clear what's happening as the facts on the ground are rapidly developing. But what is clear are Putin's demands. He has demanded that the West agree to three main terms. One, the, that Ukraine never be allowed to join the NATO alliance. Two, that NATO and the United States withdraw all of their armed forces from Eastern Europe back to the pre-1997 boundaries huh? of NATO ending in Germany, effectively abandoning Poland, the Baltic states, and much- Isn't that just so obvious? Guys, doesn't that make their, make their plan so obvious though? Like they just want like a, like, like a free pass to get all the juice?
to the rest of Eastern Europe, and that 3. NATO and America agree to freeze the NATO alliance as is and rule out any future expansion of new members, and that the alliance will not hold any military drills in Ukraine, Eastern Europe, or in the Caucasus without prior Russian consent. The West and NATO, of course, will never accept any of these terms, and Putin must know this. But through the lenses of geographic security, the economics of oil and gas, the changing climate, the shortage of water in Crimea, and Russia's own sensitive internal demographic crisis, it's clear to see what Russia's primary concerns are with Ukraine, and only time will tell how Russia and Vladimir Putin act upon those concerns. But by analyzing how Putin has acted before during times of crisis, we can likely figure out how he'll act again in the future. The recognition of both Donetsk and Luhansk as independent countries and the deployment of Russian troops into both before launching the full-scale invasion across the entire country next mirrors a striking, uncanny resemblance to exactly what Putin and the Russian government did against Georgia 14 years previously Xi, who has only three shoes in her closet, just gives a proper wardrobe. I got a bunch though. I went to the I went to the store, man. I got, I got bought a bunch of shirts. I just don't change, man. You guys, it smells like the store still. Back in two. You guys, I buy shirts, okay? And if it smells like like the store, I don't change. Two thousand eight. Back then, the Russian army invaded the country of Georgia in what would ultimately become the first European war of the 21st century. Two pro-Russian breakaway provinces inside of Georgia, Abkhazia and South Ossetia, were each recognized by Russia as fully separate and independent countries. And then, by using the pretext of Georgian occupation of both, Russia deployed troops into both and, from there, initiated a full-scale land, sea... Hold up, I, I got you, I got you. Says you, one outfit Andy. No, no, I, I got you, I got you. One costume Andy. And air Not invasion voice. across the rest of Georgia. Across the 12 days of intense fighting that followed, the Russians occupied both Abkhazia and South Ossetia within Georgia, solidified their de facto oh, independence, and effectively dismembered the country, displacing nearly 200,000 people and causing Georgia to sever all diplomatic relations with Russia. However, it was, in the end, a decisive victory for Russia and for Vladimir Putin, as it kept Georgia from joining NATO, and at a time when NATO and the West were more distracted by the quagmires of Iraq and Afghanistan, there was little international attention, let alone condemnation. It would oh, only be less than six in. years later when Putin would deploy the exact same kinds of tactics that he used against- Wait, but wouldn't you think that since they're already here so close that it, this, would, this would be a bad call? I don't six get it. Six years later, I mean, I don't when Putin would deploy the exact dude, same kinds of tactics that he used against Georgia, against Ukraine, Not in close. Crimea, and the on Bass. And now in 2022, it once again appears that history is repeating itself in Donetsk, Luhansk, and Ukraine. Without a doubt, the Russian invasion of Georgia is absolutely critical to understanding how Putin's modern military strategy of dismemberment works, and in understanding what he might ultimately plan to do with Ukraine. But, unfortunately, if I made a video about it on YouTube, it's a guarantee that it would get demonetized and age-restricted, and, as a result, there's simply no way that you would ever see it. So, instead, I created yet another full-length companion video to this one in my ongoing Modern Conflict series that's about the exact same length as this video was, that covers the entire course of the Russian invasion of Guys, Georgia that's, from- That's a hashtag ad, but that's a good one, though, dude. I think it's I think it's good the people that actually care about the politics of it, right? And know that they can't say or or, or present things on their videos that they they make it a third party somewhere else, dude. And they take the video that they know will reach most people to go to the. Other, I think that's like brilliant, dude. Beginning that's what to people end need. and upload because, because if YouTube is being weird and they're and they're ge geo blocking, ad blocking, uh, ad resisting, uh, it's and YouTube has been known to do this. 
people have no other options to give what people what, to Nebula, what they need, they which, want. as you've probably heard by now, is home to tons of exclusive, ad-free content like my entire Modern Conflict series, with 10 other additional full-length episodes with more than 3 hours of additional content that you can go and watch right now, including this 26-minute long video that I made earlier about the entire history and course of the modern conflict between Ukraine and Russia, covering everything from the breakup of the Soviet Union to the invasion cool. and annexation of Crimea and the ongoing war and battles in eastern Ukraine between Russian-backed separatists and the Ukrainian government. There are plenty of other episodes too that I've produced that cover the I Battle of Aleppo in yeah, Syria, I, I the, the wars games, of Saddam Hussein, the United States-Iran conflict, and much, much more. Of course, the reason why all of these videos are only available on Nebula is because they just wouldn't ever work on YouTube and would never be viewed here because of the way that this site works. On the other hand, Nebula is a different platform without an algorithm and without any ads. It's just a platform about great and unique content made by great and independent educational creators with plenty of other unique, exclusive bonus projects from other creators you probably already know, like the Battle of Britain and Logistics of D-Day series from Real Engineering, and plenty of hour-plus-long documentary cool. specials from Wendover. Guys, I love you guys, if we watch this video, I love the ad play. Productions, okay. along with so many I others. I love the this is the video. best way to get access to Nebula and all of this incredible content is definitely through the amazing Curiosity Stream Nebula bundle deal. And with its current sales price, it's less than $15 a year to get full, complete access to everything on both sites. And oh, yeah. Curiosity Stream has some phenomenal stuff that you're definitely going to enjoy as well, like Apocalypse Stalin, a three part documentary series that's nearly three hours long that covers the entire history of I'm Joseph excited. Stalin from early obscurity through World War II to ruling over one of the world's two global superpowers armed with nuclear weapons. If you want to see a documentary explaining how the Cold War began and who Joseph Stalin was, then this is the documentary for you to go and watch now. Okay. I really can't. Okay, I've enjoyed the video. Hey, um, listen, if real life lore, if this is, it ever gets you, man, thank you for the video. I really enjoyed watching it. I think it was very informative. And if you don't want me watching your videos, just send me a DM, dude, and I will uh, delete the VOD, and we'll watch your videos again, and much love. Cool, man. Um, and if I didn't react enough, well, next time I'm, I'm gonna try to react harder. Oh my god, I can't believe they're doing this, dude. Holy shit, metal, blue paint, hey, this is fucking that, nuts, side, dude. Really Holy, look at the Russia cement, dude. That's a lot of so fucking cement, boys. Dude, look at that cement, though. Shush. Their army is on half of our island. I'm terrified and anxious after Ukraine. The world needs to be a war.